video we are looking at heat recovery steam generators and specifically at a couple of temperature differences that really define the performance of a heat recovery steam generator in the combined cycle power plant. So let's take a look at first at the temperature diagram of a typical steam boiler, so not heat recovery steam generator. So here we have a combustion going on in the furnace and here we typically need uh, most effective cooling because the adiabatic flame temperature in combustion, if we extrapolate this line here, it would go up to with biomass typically 1300, 400, maybe even 500 with dry biomass. So high temperatures that we would have huge problems with our surfaces if we allow temperature to get that high. So answer is we don't allow it to get that high. We get the most effective possible cooling in the furnace that is by steam generator we keep the temperature fairly low, relatively speaking, under 1000 degrees, so ash doesn't melt, our material yield strength stays high enough, we don't get slagging, corrosion, that kind of problems. And then we have the other heat transfer surfaces, flue gas temperature is reduced, and steam is first superheated, then we go towards colder and colder, uh, steam cycle temperatures and finally the air preheater and we notice that the temperature differences over which we transfer heat they are very high so we're talking about hundreds of degrees and that's just the nature of the beast from the perspective that we do have this very high adiabatic flame temperature we cannot get our steam to thousand degree temperature loads of problems completely impossible doesn't happen so large temperature differences. Also what is characteristic of a typical steam boiler is that especially if we're talking about the biomass fired ones, then our uh, fuel characteristics, they are not very stable. Sometimes we get higher, lower moisture and uh, the conditions vary. Also there's a lot of uh, fly ash, fouling, bed materials. So heat transfer coefficients are also not so constant. Lots of things that make it difficult to also dimension these surfaces very precisely. Doesn't matter when we come to a heat recovery steam generator that is recovering the heat from gas turbine flue gas. So, first of all, the gas turbine operates in a very, very stable manner. So, the mass flow rate, the temperature, the composition of the flue gas flow, all are completely stable. They are precisely known. Uh, fuel characteristics, basically almost no variety there, so everything stays completely stable. What that means is that uh, in combination <coughs> with the other factors that uh, we don't need the highly effective cooling of a furnace, which we don't have, and the remaining problem is that uh, the flue gas temperature that is coming in to the heat recovery steam generator, that is fairly low, so we're basically limited not so much by um, high temperatures and effective cooling, but low temperature and ability to transfer heat from the low temperature flue gas flow while attaining high enough temperatures that our steam cycle efficiency doesn't go very low. So basically it means that we can and also kind of have to put our heat transfer surfaces in the order of temperature. So from hottest flue gas we transfer heat to the hottest part of the work fluid in the steam cycle, that is superheater, and then towards lower temperature steam generator economizer. And because we are not burning anything here, we don't have air free heaters. And we want to get, and we can get, very low temperature differences between the flue gas and the steam cycle work fluid because, well, basically we have to, if we want to get decent efficiencies, and we can, because the stable conditions of the flue gas flow, little fouling, that means that we are able to dimension our heat transfer surfaces very precisely and we know exactly how they are going to perform and that's why basically much closer design is. So basically we'll look at the temperature diagram now of a heat recover steam generator and simple possible case where we have only one pressure level. So, Basically, our performance 
is the large extent defined by what is called the pinch point, which means smallest temperature difference between flue gas, hot side flow, and the cold flow, which is the water and steam. So that's always going to be basically at the cold end of the steam generator. So in flue gas direction, <coughs> flow direction, it's the exit from the steam generator. And temperature difference here, that, that is what we call the, the pinch point. So typically it's going to be somewhere around 10 degrees, give or take a couple of degrees Celsius, very much smaller than the temperature differences we saw that would be typical for a, a steam boiler where we have combustion going on there. We had hundreds of degrees here, we have around 10. And why 10 now, why not less, why not more? Well, if it was too low as pinch point temperature differences about approach zero, the necessary heat transfer area approaches infinity. So too close means uneconomically expensive. And if we leave it too high, then efficiency is going to be reduced. And why efficiency is going to be reduced with high pinch point? A couple of ways to think about it. Well, first of all, the simplest one is that, okay, any power cycle, the more we destroy exergy, the more we create entropy, the worse our performance is going to be. And we destroy exergy and create entropy every time we transfer heat over a temperature difference. And the greater the temperature difference, the greater the entropy generation and exergy destruction. So that's a simple general way of thinking about it. The other way is that if we look at this temperature diagram right here, and we think that, okay, we keep fixed mass flow rate of water into economizer. And that means that this curve is going to remain as it is. Now, what's going to happen if we increase the pinch point? Now, our temperature is going to be the same for the economizer. So we're not moving up or down here. We're getting the same temperature in. So how does that then create greater pinch point? Well, it means that this whole water side curve moves to the left if we keep pressure constant. That means that basically here we start further to the left. It means that this bit here becomes stack loss. So we transfer less heat into our steam cycle. So that's a loss of power generation right there. But it doesn't end there because also we cut off equivalent bit from here as we move to the left. So this is what we get in. This bit would move outside of here. So there is no heat transfer here because we start from this temperature. There is the temperature of flux as we get in. So that means that our average temperature of heat input into the steam cycle is going to be reduced. And from that lower amount of heat that we get in, we also convert that heat to power at a lower efficiency. Now, of course, we could also increase the pinch point in different ways. We don't necessarily have to keep the same uh, mass flow rate and same pressure. But as we remember from the Rankin cycle lecture, I think it was lecture number two, and we've kind of repeated it on almost every lecture since, if we reduce steam generator pressure, so we reduce steam pressure, that's also going to drop our efficiency because that also reduces our average temperature of heat input. Or the alternative, which is probably going to be the best way to allow for smaller heat transfer surface at the expense of greater pinch point temperature difference, would be to maintain the temperature and the pressure and the superheated temperature and just reduce the mass flow rate. So that way we basically, all of the surfaces are going to be steeper steam generator part is going to be less because we transfer less heat to boil a smaller amount of water. And then again, steeper here. So basically we get the same efficiency out of our steam cycle, but we just transfer less heat into it. So that means our stack loss is going to be increased. That's inevitable, but at least our steam cycle maintains its efficiency. So practically the economic optimum is around 10 degrees, give or take. And that's where these are typically decided. 
The other temperature difference that is kind of important for heat recovery steam generators is the temperature approach. And this should be now a familiar term from lecture number three in steam boilers. So this is the temperature approach here, this bit. So pinch point is temperature difference between steam boiling point and flue gas, flue gas exit from steam generator. Approach temperature is the exit temperature from economizer. And temperature approach is the temperature difference between boiling point. So this temperature right here and the exit. So this little bit of vertical notch here. So we keep a temperature approach so that we don't accidentally end up boiling water in our economizer, which is not designed for boiling water, which will probably be damaged if not destroyed. So we keep a small temperature difference here. And now we remember that in a typical steam boiler, this would be somewhere typically well over 20 degrees, often more than 30, sometimes as high as 40 degrees. But now again, because our flow gas composition is precisely known, flow conditions are known, fouling is going to be very little. We can design our boilers more precisely. <coughs> and something like around 10 degrees is also quite okay for approach temperature difference. So again, we are, by reducing this temperature here, putting almost boiling point water out of the economizer into the drum, we get this temperature difference throughout the whole economizer a little bit closer. We cool down uh, flue gas a little bit better. We destroy a little bit less exergy and we create a little bit less entropy. So all things good for efficiency. And finally, if we think about the final temperature difference, this is going to be the flue gas entry point where superheater steam exits the heat recovery steam generator. So here the temperature difference is typically around 25 to 40 degrees. So that means that how much superheat we're able to get in our superheater is dependent on what kind of temperature of flue gas we're getting out of the out of the gas turbine. So some tens of degrees. Again, much, much smaller temperature differences than in the steam boiler where we have combustion. There we have hundreds of degrees. Here we have tens of degrees. And basically that's going to limit our superheated steam temperatures at the turbine inlet to such levels that we usually can't get uh, really high pressures without creating problems with uh, too high moisture. So typically around 100 bars for combined cycle power plant steam turbine inlet temperatures. Now, two pressure level pro reheat process, that's one exception. There's a picture of such in the lecture slides. I haven't included it here. A little bit of a special case. Those are more commonly used with this uh, uh, Alstom GT24 and 26 reheat gas turbines where we have fairly high turbine exit temperatures for the flue gas. And there we can quite well take advantage of that by including a reheat and then, then our pressure can increase a little bit higher. If we, if we use additional firing, we can also get a little bit higher temperatures, but basically still we usually don't want to increase it uh, very high, although from the perspective of uh, flue gas properties, we wouldn't have huge problems with high temperature corrosion or anything. But additional firing is fundamentally something that's going to hurt our efficiency. So the more additional firing we do, although we are increasing the power, we're also improving the efficiency, thermal efficiency of the steam cycle but we are moving the whole power plant process closer and closer to a steam cycle. We are not taking full advantage of the combined cycle where we put heat input at very high temperature in the gas turbine combustion chamber. And then we deal with only that heat and we extract all the possible energy out of it. All the additional fuel that we put in additional firing 
we can get uh, power out of it only at the efficiency of steam cycle, not at the efficiency of combined cycle. So that's why the power generation efficiency of the whole plant is going to be reduced by additional fire. 